Hello everyone, this is your professor Sarfaraz Khan and welcome back to this last recording for week 13 on the topic of transactions. Now this is actually related to your data manipulation language but we are covering it now. That is, if you remember, in week 9, when I started SQL, I gave, I told you that there are four sub-languages to SQL. Can you recall what are they? You have data definition language, which is create, alter, drop. You have data manipulation language, which is insert, update, delete. And then you have something called as transaction control language, which has commit and rollback statements. The fourth is data control language, which you will study in level two and level four. In that you will basically create a user and give permissions to a user and take back permissions from a user. So right now we are going to see the third sub language of SQL that is transaction control language, commit and rollback. But before we go to that, we need to understand what are transactions. Again, there is not a lot of coding in this part of your SQL. It is more conceptual. You have to understand the concept and the impact. So commit and rollback are just two small keywords, but you have to understand the impact of those statements on your work. <clears throat> so first we need to understand what is a transaction. You have been performing several inserts, update, deletes. Now, those were individual insert, update, deletes. <clears throat> Sorry. Those were individual insert, update, and deletes. In real time, what could happen is you may want, have, you may have a requirement of grouping together, bundling together multiple DML operations as one block of work. And either all the work should be committed meaning saved or all the work should be undone. Think that, let us say I send you uh, e-transfer, one of you uh, e-transfer e of $100. So the moment I send e-transfer, my account should be debited, your account should be credited. And then the transaction is complete. It should not stop halfway. Either it should do both the things or it should not do any of the two things, right? That is the unit of work. That is one block. This is going to be a this is going to be very frequent real time requirement. You want to do either everything or you want to undo everything, everything or nothing. We call it all or nothing operation. <laughs> so transactions allows you to group together, bundle together, multiple insert, update, delete statements as one block. In Postgres, you start a transaction by writing the keyword begin. Different RDBMS may have a slightly different rule with this. In Postgres, you start by writing begin. Then a transaction can have just one statement or a transaction can have several, several DML statements. Okay. So there is no limitation on the size of a transaction. And then once your DML statements are, you know, are executed, then you decide whether you want to commit, meaning save the transaction, or you want to roll back, meaning undo the transaction. At this time, if I commit statement one, two, and three, all three will be committed. And at this point, if I say roll back, all the three statements will be rolled back. So it's all or nothing operation. <clears throat> Let us see a live demo of transaction. But before going to that demo, we have not written commit and rollback yet, right? We have, we have done insert and updates and deletes in week nine and then lab six. We never wrote commit and rollback. Then how was our data saved so far? How did all the records we inserted got saved? It is because your PG admin tool has a setting. If you come to file, preferences, 
you come to query tool and options of query tool you will see there is a setting called auto comment and it is on <clears throat> meaning up until now whatever insert update deletes you have written the moment that insert update delete was successfully executed that data got committed without even you writing the commit so if you want to check transactions if you want to check out transactions first of all you will have to close this you cannot have auto commit on and then you know write a transaction both are mutually exclusive so you have to first turn turn off this setting auto commit off and this is just this postgres different as i say different rtbms may have different rules and settings the concept of transaction remains same but the settings may be different <clears throat> as I said, your transaction begins with the keyword begin. And here, let us say I write insert into EMP. And I'm just going to give employee number, e name, job, values, let us say 3001. I'm just going to give you names that comes to my mind and job avenger. <clears throat> and I'm just going to insert a few more records. One, two. And let us say it is 302. And this one is Peter as in Peter Parker. And this one is also Avenger. And the third record is 303. Who else? Who else? Mm, why can't I think of anyone else? Oh my God. Uh, what's the name of Hulk? What's the name of Hulk? Dr. Banner? Is it Banner? Bruce? Yeah, Bruce. Bruce Banner. And let us call them different adventures. <clears throat> now, I run this. Now, remember, I have not written commit or rollback yet. So I run this. Okay. And now, if I check select star from employees. Okay. I run this. And I... See the three records, Tony, Peter, and Bruce. But now I decide, no, no, I don't want these records. Okay, I can write a rollback. When I write a rollback, all the inserts will be undone. They will be removed, basically. And now when I want to go back and check, have a look, those records are gone. By the way, this was there before, earlier, okay? I did not insert, no, it was there. So our records are 3001, 2, and 3. See, those records are gone. But if I restart the transaction, now that transaction has ended with a rollback. Now, if I do this again, this will be a new transaction. So when I start this transaction, I check the data. The data will, of course, be there at the bottom, 3001, 2, and 3. But this time, I say commit instead of a rollback. Commit will make the data permanent. You know, it will save the data. Now the data is permanent. Even if you exit, even if you, you know, now the only way to get rid of this data is to delete. So this is a transaction. This will be needed in real time when you want to group multiple DMLs as one block. Either everything should be committed or everything should be rolled out. This is what transactions allows you to do. Commit will end the transaction with a save. Rollback will end the transaction with undoing that block. This is this topic is dealt with only conceptually. There will be no lab or there will be no practical work as of now. I ex I encourage you to try the code that I have written, but uh, there is no lab work on this topic. But yeah, there may be conceptual questions on this topic in your final exam. You should know what is a transaction, what happens with commit, what happens with auto commit. Remember that between a transaction, transaction is only group of DML. The moment you write any DDL, so if I write drop table DPT, so I'm not going to execute. Let us say I write this table or write alter table, you know, DPT, anything. 
the moment I write any DDL, all DDLs are auto commit. Remember, <coughs> sorry. So DDL statements are auto commit. There is no commit rollback for DDL. DDL is an auto commit. When you write DDL, the ongoing transaction will be committed automatically. So you never mix DDLs and DMLs. Never do this. Never mix DDLs and DMLs. So here I have given you a note in the PPT as well that transaction ends automatically when commit with a commit when they encounter DDL statements. All DDLs are auto commit. I've given you a small note. <clears throat> this is only specific to Postgres. That in Postgres, you can also have a transactional DDL, meaning you can group multiple DDL statements into one transaction. And you can either commit and roll back even DDLs. And this is only with Postgres. This is not this will not be a part of our assessment or exams. I'm just because it's there, I just wanted to write it. So beyond this, guys, there are some characteristics of a transaction that each transaction should be atomic, meaning it should actually you know, perform the work that is required to do. It should be consistent, meaning once the transaction is committed, it is committed. There, there should be, even if the database crash crashes, that data should be protected. So when the database gives you this message, okay, that certain transaction has committed. I think I'll get an error if I do this now <clears throat> because there's no transaction, but the when you get the message committed here, okay, then that's a guarantee by the database that the transaction is protected. Uh, there is a characteristics of isolation, meaning uh, if 10 people are inserting data simultaneously in the database, all the 10 people have their private session with the database, and their work is independent and individual, private. It is only when the user commits, their committed data becomes visible to the other users. So let us say you are 10 students connected to the server. All 10 of you are trying to insert one one record. It is only when you write commit that your record becomes a part of the you know, permanent information of the database and the other nine users will be able to see only after you have committed. <clears throat> same way when once it is committed it's durable so these are called basically asset properties of a transaction this, is, this comes from rdbms and in long transactions you can also create a save point which is like a milestone it's like a marker of a transaction let us say you're performing 10 dmls but you think oh it's too long let's let me create a midpoint like after five dmls i'll create a save point so you can do that and what save points allows you to do is it allows you to roll back partial transaction. So let us say you are at statement nine and you want to roll back up until statement five and you have created a save point at statement five. You can do that. Again, we are just discussing this conceptually. There'll be no lab work on this, but you should be familiar with the terms commit, roll back and save point and their impacts. That is it, everyone. This is all about transactions. And with this, we end week 13 recorded sessions. Just to summarize, the first video is an introduction. The second video is on views. The third video is on indexes. And this fourth one is on transactions. I will upload the notepad text file with all the you know code that I've used in the, in the lecture. Uh, I hope you enjoyed these sessions. Try to run the code that I'm providing. And this should prepare you for your lab as well. Remember, in week 14, you are doing lab 10 as well as demoing your assignment too. I encourage you to start lab 10 ahead of time. In fact, maybe even complete it or go to lab only to ask a question about the lab if you're stuck somewhere and use that time to demo your assignment too. Rest, best of luck for your final exam week, week 15. And I hope some or all of you meet me again in level four database course. I do not teach level two database course. I teach one and four. So if you are there, I hope we meet again. Until then, best of luck and goodbye.